unprecedented time. Who else in this way has shaped the history of humankind? Who else has influenced music, literature, education, expression, charity, culture, architecture, art, the human connection? Who else could cause such a revolution in merely three years from a small unknown town with 12 clueless volunteers? Who else could do this with no weapon, no army, no money, no home, no new religious book, no palace, no throne? Who else did even have to write down a single word and yet shape the lives of so many that they wrote everything they heard? Who else would wash the feet of betrayers, confront the pride in religious prayers? Who else could heal the sick and give sight to the blind? Who else could raise the dead? Who else's words could ease the mind? Who else is the path, the perfect word, the way, the truth, and giving life? The bread of life the brand new one. Who else is king and prince of peace? Who else is cornerstone? Who else is life's foundation? Who else makes all things known? Who else is the lion, the lamb, the morning star, defining love, the living water reservoir? Who else could take the pain of an innocent death, take the punishment for our offense, and with their final breath, Forgive the ones that put them there. And who else in all of history has ever raised themselves from the dead? <coughs> who else was man yet fully God with us? Who else is more than what the world could ever give us? Who else was man yet God through and through? Who else from the start has always been there with you? Who else is the proof, the lesson, the friend? Who else is savior? Who else will the father send? Who else is waiting for you at the end? No one else, no one else but Jesus. studies over the years of who is the most influential person ever to live, you know, throughout all of history. And you can just, you can start naming off the top of your head different people that have had such an incredible impact on the world, on their country, on their community, on their family. Who is such a person that impacts from their family, all the way to their community, their companies in some cases, their community, their, their states, their country, and the world. Who does that? Who has that kind of influence that can impact in all of those areas? And it's really amazing, even people that do not believe in the ministry of Jesus Christ, it is the absolute consensus that Jesus Christ was the most influential person that ever lived throughout history. And even the ones that don't believe in him will say the exact same thing, that they believe that Jesus Christ, without a doubt, was the most influential man that ever lived. And it just tells us so much about understanding what it's, what it's like and what it's about to learn more about Jesus and to be more like Jesus. And I want, to, I want to just start with the title today of the message that says, The Principle of Sanctifying Others. And first of all, let's understand the term principle. Uh, you're, trying, you're trying to figure out, okay, a principle. Well, that's a truth, okay? A principle is a truth that is the foundation to behavior. So if you kind of apply that, you say, well, the truth is the foundation of behavior of sanctifying others. In other words, what is our behavior when it comes to sanctifying others? Because Jesus sanctified others, and he desires that we are like him, and therefore we are sanctifying others. And it sounds a little strange when you think about it. What, what do you mean? I am actually sanctifying other people. That sounds a little strange. But I think it's really important for us to understand this principle 
Otherwise, I wouldn't have titled an entire sermon, The Principle of Sanctifying Others. The Principle of Your Influence on Others. And what does that mean? And what does it look like? And when you say principle, that means God has designed it a certain way for your influence to have a certain impact on people if you are his child. If you're his child, you will have a certain impact on people by his design. That's his principle. And we're going to see that unfold throughout all of Scripture today. I'll take you on a journey. I'm going to take you all over the place and let you look and see and be amazed at the people that are impacted. Yes, we have this being recorded again this week on video. You can see it on YouTube. And I just got to tell you, when you think of influencing, you can't help but think about YouTube. Do y'all know what the YouTubers are called? They're called the YouTubers. And these are the people on YouTube that have millions of followers. They're, so they're, they get that distinctive title of a YouTuber. And as a result of having just all these followers, they actually change trend. They actually change culture. And when you look back at Jesus, that's the influencer that he wants us to be. He wants us to change trend and change culture for him and his kingdom. And I can just tell you, um, I'm glad that Josh is putting this on video. I'm glad that Josh is putting this on YouTube. I went and watched for last week, uh, last, last week's sermon. I wanted to get a rock and crawl under it and never come out again. I'm, I'm telling you, I look at that and I'm going, this is horrific. And, and I must, and I just have to realize that God just uses everything in his way to touch people. Because when I look at that, I go, I'm never going to do this again. And it's amazing that I'm back this week and I'm standing up here doing this. Because as I'm standing here, I'm thinking back what it looked like and I'm going, oh my gracious, this is horrific. But I'm going to do the best I can. You know, I'm going to try to overlook that. I'm going to do my best to try to put that out of my mind and just kind of stand here and give you the principle, the principle of sanctifying other people the best way that I can. And I hope you get something from it. I hope you get something out of it. There's a, there's a guy. Y'all may remember seeing him or heard of him. His name is Nick, and I wrote it down so that I wouldn't forget it. Nick. Bugesic. Nick Bugesic, Australian. Nick Bugesic. Now, Nick was born with no arms. And he had no legs. Neither one. And his story is about how he wanted to commit suicide. When he was very, very young, 10 years old, he went out in six inches of water and tried to commit suicide. Because he had no legs and he had no arms and, and he, he just really felt like he would never have any purpose in life. But let me just tell you, Nick today is probably the number one motivational speaker in the world today. Can you believe that? He is all over the world talking about his life. And if you look him up, you'll see this little guy with no arms and no legs out swimming. And you're going, how, how does he do that? I mean, I can't even hardly do it when I'm you know, out there doing all, you know, kicking and screaming and doing all that. I can't hardly stay on top of the water. He's out there swimming around. It's the most incredible thing. And I, and I saw him out on a soccer field kicking around a soccer ball. How do you do that? How does he stay vertical? How do you stay vertical? He stays vertical. Not only does he stay vertical, he kind of hops and he can hit a, a soccer ball. I saw him jump out of a plane and, and pull a parachute. Uh, on, on video. It, it's, it's an amazing thing to see someone that has no legs and no arms doing incredible things on the planet. And it gives us all encouragement, folks. And it even gives me encouragement when I see myself on the video. It gives us all encouragement that God can take whoever you are in whatever condition you're in and you can be a sanctifying 
force for the people around you, the influential force that is within you, can just blow people away and blow you away. What are we doing? Get some light. Okay. So, when you can see it done with him, and you can see it done with all these other people that don't look the part, that seem to have all these elements, seem to have all these issues. So what is it? What is it that gives this influence that impacts and affects the world? Well, we want to go on that journey. And we want to check it out. And you, you, you can say right now, all kinds of things have influenced your life. You know, my mother's sitting right there. She's had a big influence on my life. Um, you can say, of course, I will have to mention the, uh, the commercial where you don't grow up being like your parents. Don't you love that commercial? I hope it was good. <laughs> this is, you know, when, when I, I know when I take a drink, I go, <sighs> after I finish drinking, and my dad did that all the time. And Dad did something to me all the time because when we're sitting at the dining table, and I'm doing crazy things with my hands, I'm playing drums, and, and, I, and I'm doing the drink like this, and I'm doing all kinds of crazy things. That's exactly what my dad did. And so we're all influenced by so many different people in our lives as we grow up. But let me tell you, when you think about the power of influence when it comes to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ in your life, it's overwhelming. It's unexplainable. And we're going to take a look at that. I think it, I think it will help us get our arms around this a little better. Let me bring up some examples in scripture, I, obviously I can't go in and read every example that comes to mind in the scripture. We'd be here all day, but you just think of some of the examples in the scripture that come to mind. One of them is, is Joshua. Now let's just think for a moment. It was time for Israel to go in and claim its land and get its inheritance. And I'm not asking for scripture right now, but Joshua was one man that put his total devotion to God. And he was all in. And God took the one man and the influence he had on the Israel nation was incredible. One man, millions, probably up to three million people, influenced to a degree by one man that that nation was able to receive its inheritance, was able to go in and annihilate anyone in their path. They were killing all the people that were in their path and taking over their towns and cities because that was their inheritance. And God says, I will be with you and we'll take care of anybody that gets in your way. And, God, and, and Joshua took the people all over the region and he then divided it all up and gave it to the different tribes so that they got their inheritance. This was, it's incredible. All because one man, one man devoted his life to God. And as a result of that, the entire nation of Israel was sanctified. It was under a peace, a peace from God because of that man. I mean, what about, what about Joseph? Let me just think for a moment. You, mean, you know, Joseph was one of the sons of Jacob. And then, you know, remember the brothers, you know, were, were mad at Joseph because he was the, the son that the father loved and gave him the coat. Remember, Joseph had a really neat coat. And Joseph would go out and say, I had a dream and I'm going to be ruling over you guys one of these days. And the brothers hated him. And so Joseph was not perfect, right? He had some sin in his life, but for the most part, Joseph gave his entire being to God. And, and so Joseph goes through these incredible hardships, but funny, isn't it? Funny, everywhere Joseph went, he had influence on everybody around him such that they would turn over the keys to him. I mean, you just think about that. Pharaoh of Egypt basically gave him the kingdom, all of Egypt, to be ruling over. I mean, why, why would anybody do that? Just think for a moment the amount of influence Joseph would have to have for Pharaoh to do that. That's an incredible amount of influence. And Pharaoh said, here, I'm going to give it to you. Of course, Joseph did miraculous things. He, they went prepared for a seven-year um, famine that was coming. They stored up grain, and they were able to provide grain for people all around the world, all because of Joseph, and because of his influence, and because of his wisdom. 
his discernment, all that came from this relationship that he had with God. And so, folks, if, if we have to see for just a moment how incredible it is if we have that relationship with Christ that is real and we are all in and we're totally devoted to him. And as a result of that, our influence is going to just explode with people all around. Now, just like Israel, all the people that you are influencing, your sphere of influence, are receiving the overflow blessing from you, even though they're not following Christ. Isn't that strange? And we're going to see in Scripture that that's the way God's designed it. Your overflow of blessing covers people all around you. And, and take companies. That's who I deal with. That's my vocation. I deal with executives and companies. And I'm always talking, if you will give everything to Christ, just everything, your influence, your blessings will overflow into the entire company, even though most of your company probably doesn't even know who Jesus Christ is or cares. But that blessing just floods into the company. Sanctifying others through you. Sanctifying others through you. Others receiving blessings from you. Now, so let's understand. When you refuse to give Christ everything, you know who he is, you believe in him. You know who he is and you believe in him. But you refuse to give him everything. Just not going to do it. I, I, I prefer to keep part of my life in the world. You know, you, you talk about being separate from the world. I'm not quite ready to do that. So I'm going to do both. I'm going to kind of be lukewarm. We all know how he feels about lukewarm, right? We've read that in Revelation. Doesn't like lukewarm. One foot in the world. One foot in his kingdom. One foot in his church. And because of our unwillingness to go all in for him, we not only, listen, we not only give up our abundant life that he has designed for us, we not only give that up, but just think, you're giving up all of the overflow blessings of influence with all the people around you. They don't get into that. If, if Joshua had been that way, where would Israel be? And we're going to read about Israel as Israel went along. You, you remember every once in a while they get this king, and, and God was saying, and, you know, right there in his word, he said, and this king did not follow the ways of the Lord. And as a result of that, what happened to the entire nation of Israel? What kind of influence did the king have? I mean, and then you read on a little bit further, and all of a sudden you get this king, and the king would come in, and the king followed the statutes, the precepts, the standards of God Almighty in everything he did. And what was the influential result of that king doing that? Israel lived in a time of peace. They had no disasters. Their borders were closed. No one could come in. No one could bother them. And they enjoyed the fruits of their labor. Folks, your influence is powerful. If you will just do what Scripture says, obey God, give yourself fully, 100% to Him and His kingdom. And He will, through you, create an influence, a sanctifying principle for others all around you. Now think of it this way. Take your family. You have an influence on your family, right? If, if you haven't given everything to Christ, the only influence you have is out of your own efforts, your own strength. That's it. That's your influence. And you know, it's tough to have a great influence on your family out of your own strength, is it not? Just your family. But can you imagine going a step further and having an influence on your company that you may own or manage or be a a CEO or a manager of, you can't hardly have enough influence on your family, much less go into these companies and try to influence the company 
You can't do it. Or what about your community? I have a hard enough time with my family, much less my company, much less my community, much less my state, much less my country, much less the world. You can't do any of that. You just don't have enough. Your own strength is not enough. But if you will give all, 100%, all in, to Jesus Christ and his standards and his principles and his commandments, and give it all to him, look what happens. It's all over scripture, folks. It's everywhere. Your influence to people, your influence to each other is mind-blowing. But instead, there's these little things in our lives. I mean, these little things. And we've talked weeks ago about our conscience. Make sure your conscience is clean and pure before God and man. You see, Jesus lets you know when you're not on his path. He lets you know when things aren't going right. He says, take care of it immediately. Come to him and say, I'm sorry, and repent. And get your conscience clear. Because when you don't have a clear conscience, your influence on other people is zero. You don't have enough. You don't have enough. And you can say, well, I've tried my best. I'm telling you, you don't have enough. But if you would just take for a moment and think what it would be like if I would just surrender. That's why we did the song Surrender today. If I would just surrender everything. My walk is for one purpose and one purpose only. And that's to follow Jesus Christ in everything. Nothing else comes close. And if you look at every one of those characters, David, Moses, Solomon, Joseph, who we've already talked about, Joshua, all of them, the same thing. Gideon. I mean, good old Gideon that we talked about recently. I mean, he was the last one you would expect. Did not look the part. You know, yeah, he had arms and legs. At least he had arms and legs. But hey, he didn't look the part. He was very weak. He was the lowest on the totem pole. But yet, he gave everything to God. And as a result, the influence was overwhelming. He sanctified everybody around him. He, he gave them incredible blessing, and they didn't even know it. And you think about that, the people that are getting the overflow of blessing that's coming from you, those people don't even know it. If they're in a company, and the company is reaping the blessings of you and your influence, and they're going, well, it must be the market. You know, the market's doing really well, and we're having a good time in this market, and it's just amazing of things we're accomplishing. We're working hard as a company. We've set really good goals, and we're really striving to meet those goals. All these things that culture teaches folks, it is clear. The greatest companies out there are those that have someone in a leadership position that give everything to Jesus Christ, and the blessings just flow. Just like Joseph, just like Joshua, all of them, just like David. If you are willing, just for one moment, to consider what it would be like if I just gave it all. And the amount of influence and impact that you would have on people. Ooh. Okay, here comes the scripture. Let's look. Let's take a look. What does that look like? Here we go. Start with 1 Corinthians 7, 14. Y'all seen this one. We we're talking about those that have been married for a long time. Look at this, it's about a marriage. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife. You ever thought about that? Yeah. You know, a husband that's not a believer, it says here that that unbeliever is getting the blessing, the overflow, the influential overflow of blessing because the wife gives everything she has to Christ. Folks, do you see that? That principle, that principle that you see right here carries through in everything. Not just the family, but it bumps out into the, the company, it bumps out into the community, it bumps out into the state, into the country, and into the world. Oh my goodness. All because one person said, I'm giving everything I have to, to Christ. Everything. If my conscience goes 
ding, 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 something's not right. I am going to take it before the Lord, and I want to fix that right now because that's affecting my blessing. It's affecting my influence. And it's before God and man. If I hurt someone, if I've done something to hurt somebody out there, fix it immediately. Go before them and say, I I'm so sorry. Because who is it affecting? It's you and your influence and your impact on the community and on the lives of people. The flow of blessing is being shut off on you and everybody else. Folks, you've got to know that. You are the conduit of blessing for people around you. Do not shut it off. Even though they don't know any better, you do. You just read it. You know better. And the unbeliever wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, her children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. Oh, man, isn't that, isn't that kind of a cool thing? That because of your surrender to Christ, your children are holy, sanctified in holiness. But if you don't, folks, if you don't do that, if you don't give it all to Christ, it's out of your own efforts and that's it. Good luck. Sometimes it works out okay, sometimes it does not. But you give it all to Christ and watch the sanctifying power that flows out of you into the lives of people around you. And it is, un, without a doubt, uncountable how that influence impact goes. Do y'all see what I'm saying? When it takes off, it just goes. And you cannot even identify all the millions of people that you will impact in an incredible, blessed way because you did that. The, the principle of sanctifying others. The principle of sanctifying others designed by God for His children. Know that. Let's move on to the next scripture. Judges 2, 6 and 7 says, After Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each of their own inheritance. The people served the Lord throughout their, the lifetime of Joshua. The people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the elders that he had influenced. So even though he dies, those elders have been influenced and led to give their lives fully to the Lord, and as a result of that, Israel got to enjoy just the great things that the Lord had done for them for years. Now, there came a time not long after this where the Joshua was gone, and all the elders were gone, and nobody was left for that overflowing blessing. And one of those guys came in, and they did not follow the ways of the Lord. They decided to follow Baal. They decided to set up other idols, set up these altars, these high places. They decided to do all those things and worship other gods, and it was over. The entire nation was over. And they went into exile. They went to Babylon. They got crushed. They got... They had people coming in from all their borders killing them. Do you understand the principle of the sanctifying power of others? Let's move on. Matthew 25, 29, for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them. This is just one passage to let you know that God, God gives you a little bit and you just turn everything to Christ and he takes this little bit, this little bitty bit of very little of anything and it explodes. All because somebody is willing in their own free will to say, I give everything to you, Christ. And I realize that the pieces that I don't give to you negates it all. Do you hear that? The little pieces that you say, I'm not going to give them. These are mine. I want to keep them. I enjoy this too much in my life. I know it's wrong, but I'm going to keep doing it. Negates the whole thing. 
Now understand, you will spend eternity in heaven with Christ. But when it comes to on earth and the flow of blessings and the abundant life on earth, it ain't going to happen. Are we good? Not going to happen. Nothing is secret from God. And if it hits your conscience, you've got to deal with it before Him. You've got to. Everything. Everything, folks. When it says follow His standards and His principles and His commandments, it doesn't mean most of them. And yes, you're going to sin. Joshua sinned. Yeah, Joshua should have gone up to his brother and said, I'm going to rule you one day. We all will sin. But it's giving everything to him. He lets you know when you sin. He lets you know it. He, he lets you know. And you deal with it. You deal with it. You say, I am sorry. Now, you've already been forgiven, right? The blood of Christ is good for past, present, future. Sins are forgiven. But he loves it. When you say, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Repent. That's relationship. He loves that. That's why he's designed all this this way. He's designed it in such a way that if you will repent, give it all to him, everything, he's going to flood the blessings with all the people that you encounter. Let's move on. Say King 17, 1, 2, 43. I'm going to paraphrase this one. It's long, but I just wanted to get you this one king. It says in the 12th, year of Ahaz, king of Judah, Hoshea, son of Elah, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned in nine years. See, in verse 2 it says, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not like the kings of Israel who preceded him. In other words, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and he even did it worse. Now, what do you think happened in this, in this passage? Israel went south. So I just want to give you that. Let's go on to the next. 2 Kings 17, next one please. We're still in that second passage. Same. 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 Keep. Go. Go. <laughs> Jeep. 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 Go. Pop. Are we on 23 yet? Next one please. There we go. Thank you. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh. And to all of the officials. So Pharaoh asked them, Can we find anyone like this man? Like who? Joseph. Pharaoh's going, I don't know what it is about this Joseph guy, but I've never met anyone like him before in my life. Let me tell you this if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you give all to him, everybody around you are going to say, I've never met anyone like that in my life. Number one. And number two, consistency. You're like that all the time. See, it's inconsistencies that blow it. You know your own efforts? You know what happens with your own efforts? It goes great one day and the next day you're in the tank. It's inconsistent. And people, when they see inconsistency, what do they see? They don't believe it. They don't trust it. It's fake to them. It's fake. Folks, just to do that in, in a consistency, people will have to say around you, I've never seen anything like that before. Can you find anyone like this man? One in whom the Spirit of God, so Pharaoh of Egypt, said, this guy has God. <laughs> Pharaoh of Egypt. This guy has God. And he, he recognized that. He says, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning, so discerning, and so wise as you. Pharaoh saw it. You shall be in charge of my palace. And all my people are to submit to your orders. Wow. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. That's it. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes and fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. 
He had him ride in a chariot as his second in command, and the people shouted before him, Make way! Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Just watch what happens when someone gives themselves fully to Jesus Christ. Everybody in your sphere of influence is going to say, I've never seen anybody like that. And it's consistent. And it's different. And it's new. And it's refreshing. And they have discernment and wisdom like nobody I've ever seen before. Folks, that just comes with it. And it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter whether you're a Gideon or a David. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter what your skill mix is, how skilled you are. You know, great intellect or no intellect. Great skill or no skill. Just coming exactly who you are and giving fully to Christ the sanctifying power that you will have on all the people of influence around you is unexplainable and uncountable. It's just unbelievable. And I hope you get that flavor this morning as, we go, as we've gone on this journey. And there are many, many more. I, I love, what about Esther and Mordecai? You know, you like that story? Esther and Mordecai? You know, here's Mordecai. Esther was actually his cousin that he, that he adopted. And then she became queen. And the king saw something special in Mordecai. And you remember Hannah was trying to kill all the Jews. And as a result of Mordecai and his full allegiance to, to, the, to the kingdom of God, because of that, he winds up being second in command himself. And he was just a Jew. And all the Jews were about to be killed and about to be annihilated. But for once again, God had someone that gave themselves fully to him. And as a result of that influence, became second in command to the king. And all the nation of Israel was saved from Hannah. He was getting ready to kill every one of them. And, and it stopped. It's just immediately because of Mordecai and the influence he had. It just flowed out of it. Went everywhere. And Esther too. Amazing stories. How many, how many more do you want me to give you? <laughs> they're, they're all over the place. The sanctifying power of his people. Question for you this morning. Are you willing to be one of those? Okay, so you, you come to that place where you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to be with him in heaven. But what are you doing right now? What's your purpose here right now? He says, you give it all. You give it all. And I'll flood you. If you keep some of it, it shuts the doors, folks. It shuts them. And you're going to go before him when you go to heaven. And it's called the, the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to stand before him. And he's going to say, these are the things you would not give up. You just want to do it. And you know what? There are rewards in heaven. <laughs> it's not just here. It's not just the fact that you gave an abundant life here. And you gave up all the flow of blessings to all the people around you sanctifying blessings to people around you. But now you've given up rewards in heaven. All because you want to keep these two or three things in your life? It's nuts. Folks, see it for what it is. May your eyes be open and may you be able to see truth with clarity and understanding. My prayer for you that, that you get that today. We're going to sing out this final song and standing on the promises. You know, he promises this, folks. And that's why we want to keep these promises flowing. What I've told you today is a promise. It's a promise. And if you, if you haven't heard it lately, he never goes against the promise. He never fails on a promise. Now, this is going to be kind of, it's going to be a little different than the method of standing on the promises. <laughs> okay. Standing on the promises of Christ, like he did. And I know we've got that one. And we love to sing that, too. This was a little different arrangement. But we'll do the best we can with it. But it gives us an opportunity to stand on this promise. Let's all stand together and let's sing it. Let's sing it.